Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Bristol Township Zoning Hearing Board. Uh, I'd like to get started. Uh, please stand, remove your hats for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let me uh, introduce everybody to a few people here. To my left is our uh, solicitor, Ken Fetterman, um, our stenographer, Cindy Oliveira. We also got the director of LNI, Bob McTeague, and also with us is uh, Bo Fleming. He is um, the building and planning supervisor uh, sit sitting in with us today. Um, Mr. Secretary, can you call the board, please? Sure. Mark DeMarcus. Here. Andy Gorilla. Uh, for the record, Andy has an excused absence. Tim McMahon. Here. Tony Dunn. Here. Ed Murphy. Here. Okay, uh, before we get started on the agenda, I do have one thing that we have to take care of, and that is uh, we need a continuance on J&L Real, Real Properties, LLC. Um, I received, well, uh, Shalista re received a letter Dear Mr. Fetterman, this office represents j and Real Properties LLC and Influent Retrieval Incorporated. My client has filed the above stated uh, substantive validity challenge, which is scheduled for a hearing before the Bristol Township Zoning Hearing Board on May 9th, 2022. Please accept this correspondence as my client requests the continuance of the hearing scheduled for May 9th, 2022 to the Zoning Hearing Board. Next regularly scheduled hearing in June of 2022. My clients are willing to provide the necessary extension under Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code or other uh, applicable township ordinances to accommodate the continuance. I have copied all counsel who have requested party status to this hearing. Sincerely, Andrew R. Stoll. So what I need now from the board is a motion for continuance for this application. I'll make that motion. I need a second. Yeah. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Okay. Uh, so first on the agenda, just let me state real quick, uh, when you guys come up, either you're from the audience or council, make sure the green light is on and microphone so our stenographer can hear you, please. Uh, Timothy Warren, 20 Kenwood Drive South, Levittown, PA. One nine zero five five. Please come on up. Close the property? Okay, fine. Okay, let's continue. It is, yeah. Okay, so here's the This is the first sign of the zoning notice posted on the front of the fence facing the Kenwood Drive South. And if you go to the next picture, this is on the rear of the property facing the commercial property uh, posted on the back end of the fence. Just speak into the mic a little bit so we can hear. Yes. Hello, my name is Timothy Warren, homeowner of 20 Kenwood Drive South. Before I begin my presentation, I would like to mention I included a letter addressed from myself in the exhibits. Um, it provides more detail of the story of my experiences with my fence. I will be speaking on a few of those experiences today as I believe they translate to justification for my request of a fence, fence variance. There was also a collection of photos submitted in the exhibits, which I've only included a select few in this presentation. I would like to make it known that the fence that my request is based on is already constructed. I will invite any questions or replies on the letter, photos, or presentation at the end. 
Next slide, please. Thank you. So I'll begin with the details of my request. Um, the, my property resides in zoning district R3. Um, the circumstances that my request pertains to is in chapter 205-134 of fences, which the height for residential use is restricted to six feet. The height for non-residential use is restricted to eight feet. My request to the zoning board is a height variance on my fence specifically for the single border along the commercial property, and that is eight feet in height. The remainder of my fence is six feet in height. So I consulted a &S Fencing Company for the best solution to replace the fence and also a solution to the issues that I've been having. Um, I'll cover those issues a little bit further in the presentation as well as my justification for it. Um, but they provided the best solution within my budget and township requirements that we thought would pass. The, the eight feet high fence has a middle railing that is four feet, um, four feet high for additional support. The corners of the fence taper down to the six feet fence, so it's a, a slant on the end. I, I have photos to display what I'm speaking on. All posts are set in at least two feet of concrete, and the fence is approved by the Lower Bucks County Joint Municipality Authority, which I mentioned the unlocked gate and the slides as I understand the easement access. Um, so this first picture is of the rear property line that borders the commercial property, that is the eight feet high section and you can kind of see the tapers but I do have closer photos if you go to the next slide this is the right hand side of my property and there's no gate on this side as you can see it tapers down to six feet on the side and then the next slide please this is the left hand side um, directly behind that piece of eight foot fence is where the dumpsters reside um, you can see those in the next issues in the next pictures um, there is also an RV camper that sits directly behind that fence, which is just out of view now as well, uh, that occasionally has a resident. Um, yeah, so that was the remainder of my fence just before that with a single gate. This is the view from the commercial property uh, with the dumpsters that I speak of. They are fairly close to the property line. And, uh, and then the next picture is just the, the last corner of the fence. You could see there uh, used to be a fence that's dismantled to the left there that used to run along my property. Uh, they tore all that out when the new fence was installed. <coughs> yep. Next slide, please. So move on to the justification for my request. To briefly cover the relevant history, the issues I have, um, the fence was damaged in the spring of 2020 requiring replacement right after I purchased the house. In spring 2021, I was able to place a deposit for a new fence and became aware of a requirement for a permit. Uh, the fencing company did make me aware when I placed the deposit. At that time, I submitted paperwork for the permit and the permit was declined due to the eight feet height. Um, I was in a bit of a pickle putting a deposit on the fence and now not having authority to get the eight feet fence. I was advised to do the zoning hearing board. However, uh, with the coming balance of the fence coming due and already waiting a year for the fence to be replaced, I made a decision to have the fence installed without zoning here to hearing board approval as I didn't have the funds to uh, execute both at the same time. Um, the fence got installed in the fall of 2021, which uh, Bo actually arrived on my door the day of installation and uh, issued me a warning for it. And uh, since then I've been complying with his warnings until I had funds available to come to the zoning hearing board. Um, I did plan on coming to the zoning hearing board even uh, after the denial, being that I understand it would be required for the sale of the house. It was just a matter of security and priorities to replace the fence and uh, use my funds that way first. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so this is the damages to the fence. Um, the whole rear section was So the, the back section of the fence can completely dislodge from the fence post. Uh, you could kind of see it was unmanaged with weeds and ivy and trash as well. Um, the next photo, please. So these uh, kind of cite some of the issues that I've been having. Um, these dumpsters, after the fence got broke, broken, the dumpsters were placed closer to the proximity line, uh, the property line, and um, they're not kept in a, 
uh, legal manner. There's a lot of trash, illegal dumping that occurs, and the weeds are unmanaged as well. Um, they were placed so close that the lids would come over and rest on top of our fences and cr essentially create a bridge of trash into our property. Um, and the next slide after that. This is just another photo citing the uh, illegal dumping and unmanaged trash that accumulates there. Uh, next photo, please. So this is the current state of the dumpsters with the new fence. As you can see, there's three dumpsters placed there. They are seven feet tall, so they w are visible if I were to have a six-foot fence. Um, they're placed even closer to the, the property line as the weeds and trash was cleared out along my fence, so um, the dumpster company pushes them back further. And yeah, so um, the fences, fence, new fence was damaged already um, by kind of the same behavior that uh, damaged the fence in the first place. Uh, so unfortunately, I have a claim open and will be able to receive compensation for this. Uh, next slide, please. So I believe the situation surrounding um, and the issues I faced is unlike any other uh, that I surveyed. I looked at other residential properties that bordered commercial properties in my area near the 7-Eleven section, the rest of the Kenwood Plaza, the Walmart section, and other um, shops up that way. Um, and for several reasons here, um, no other commercial business has more than three recept more than two receptacles placed uh, on the back side of their business, and they're not placed within five feet of the property line. And um, every other place that I've uh, surveyed for a dumpster area, it's maintained, kept free of trash and litter. The lids are closed and locked at all times. And uh, illegal dumping is discouraged either with a camera or signs. Um, next slide, please. So these are the, uh, the issues that I was facing that have been since solved by the eight foot fence. I'm sorry, yeah. Yes, so uh, these are the issues that uh, were resolved with the eight foot fence. So uh, limited trash and litter now enter my property. Um, the uh, trash receptacles are no longer in view from the, the rear of my house. And uh, it, the higher fence, it, at, when the older fence was there, it prevented the weeds from growing back over top of it. Um, that's no longer a concern now that they removed that fence. Um, I do have full privacy from employees and loiters in the parking lot. As I mentioned, there's an RV that occasionally parks there and there's residents that I'm aware, unaware of. Um, there's also major sound suppression. Uh, there's a bar there that sometimes plays loud music when they empty the dumpsters, cause loud noises, and as well as when the uh, trash company comes to em empty the dumpsters, they can create loud noises, all of which has been dampened with the fence. And overall, my family's quality of life has uh, greatly improved since the installation of that fence. Next slide, please. In conclusion, my motivations for replacing the fence of these specifications are a result of issues I have had with the commercial property. I have used the official processes to legally attain the permits. However, limited finances require prior prioritization. I have no objections from, I have had no objections from any party prior to this or after the construction of my new fence. And again, I'm requesting a, a variance in height for my fence uh, just on the single border along the commercial property. That's all I have to present. No witnesses? No witnesses, yes. Any questions from the board? Bob, anything to add? No, I'm good. I just Bo? Anybody from the audience like to come up for or against this application? All right. Well, I guess I got to say it, right? Everybody out there, you know, if you need a permit for everything, right? Everything. So if you don't think you need a permit, call the township. They'll let you know if you need one or not. But you obviously knew, Mr. Warren, that you needed one, right? Yes. Okay. All right. I need a motion to uh, accept or deny this application. I'll make a motion to accept. You need a second. Second. Um, okay. Uh, anybody on the denial? I see none. All right, call the board, please, Mr. Secretary. Mark DeMarcus? Yes. Jim McMahon? Yes. Colleen Dunn? Yes. Ed Murphy? Yes. All right, Thank thanks, Mr. Warren.
All right, next up is uh, Johnny A. Hogstad, 222 Worcester Road, Fairless Hills, PA, 19030. Please come on up. Mr. Hogstad isn't present. We had talked to him last week. My name is Jeff Fournier, F-O-U-R-N-I-E-R. And uh, he's not present today. I had um, served notices on all interested parties uh, surrounding the neighborhood, both certified mail and regular mail. Also, I took pictures of the posting in the front of the building and in the back of the um, back of the unit uh, facing the property owners in the other direction. I would like to submit this as an exhibit, please. I think we received back uh, five of the six return receipts, but I have all the certified return receipt uh, green cards there. Why isn't the applicant here? Don't know. And I'm going to request a continuance. I'm requesting motioning uh, for a continuance so that applicant can give testimony on this matter. Right, because you can't. I can't give testimony, but I, I wanted to prove sort of service so that we could roll this to the next term. One of the things, one of the interesting things with this case is that I think there's a council meeting next month concerning changes in zoning ordinances that will address what we're doing today with conditional use. Um, and so I think it probably would be better to continue this in June when the zoning ordinances are changed by the well, board. Our agenda is pretty full in June. Mm -hmm. Correct, Bob? Can we move it to July? We could do that. Um, all right. Yeah, that would be after the approval by the zo by the uh, council okay. on the changes, and uh, I'm not too sure how that's going to retroactively affect cases at all, as far as those changes are. Okay. You know, if we got approval today, uh, contingent upon the approval of the council, uh, will the will the changes made by the council retroactively apply to this case? So it would probably be better to have this after the council. All right, so I, I need a motion for a continuance for this application, July of 2022. Can I get a motion from the board? I'll make that motion. I need a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Okay, there you go. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, up next, United American Muslim Association, 5201 Bristol Emily Road, Levittown, PA. Counselor? Uh, good evening, board. Uh, Bryce McGuigan from Begley Carlin, here on behalf of the applicant, the United American Muslim Association. I will be calling it UAMA for short, so that uh, you know I don't waste too much of everyone's time constantly repeating that long name. Um, thank you very much for having us here this evening. Uh, like I said, my name is Bryce McGuigan. I am the attorney for UAMA. Uh, UAMA is the United American Muslim Association. It is a nonprofit organization, religious organization, uh, that's existed for about 40 years and has been here in Bristol Township for approximately 17 years. Um, they have two different, uh, they, they basically specialize in running these uh, schools for young boys and young girls, religious uh, oriented schools. And they've had two existing locations here in Bristol Township. There's the existing girls' school near Route 13 by the, the Village Inn. 
and then there's the boys school which is the old immaculate conception what we're here today for is related to a new property at 138 or sorry 139 zimmerman lane uh, basically uama is interested in moving the girls school that's existed for 17 years right off route 13 to 139 zimmerman lane the property it's zoned m1 light uh, light manufacturing um, it's uniquely placed right on the border between Bristol Township and Middletown Township. On our property's side of Zimmerman Lane, you have a neighboring industrial warehousing type uses. And on the other side, you have a neighborhood um, with approximately 30 or so houses in the neighborhood and along Zimmerman Lane as well. Uh, the property is about 1.85 acres, it's presently improved by three separate buildings. Uh, you have the building closest to Zimmerman Lane which is basically used to be a house, but I believe it's been adapted, and now it's a yoga studio, about a 7,500-square-foot building. Then you have two buildings to the rear. You have a larger warehouse, and then you have a separate garage slash apartment. Uh, like I said, what we're here today to request, we are requesting variances in order to essentially transform the existing yoga studio into a religious boarding school. Um, the school will, ex will solely, exclusively serve about 25 to 30 middle school aged girls. And again, it's our existing facility near uh, Route 13. We're hopefully gonna move it here. But to do that, uh, we need a few variances. Um, first, we need a use variance to allow a school as the primary use on the parcel. We also need a variance for an accessory dormitory on the parcel as well. Then we need two dimensional variances which relate to density of the dormitory use. Um, those, those are to allow dormitory students to have approximately 104 square feet of space where 180 in the dormitory portion of the building is required. And separately, it's to allow a density of 16.21 students per acre where 12 are otherwise required per the ordinance. Uh, now, before I proceed with the presentation, I, I know there's a lot of neighbor interest in this, pro in this property, in this use, and I understand that. And before today, uh, I sent out a, a letter to most of the local neighbors, specifically to the neighbors along Zimmerman Lane, together with the neighbors along, I believe, Midway Avenue, um, to have a meeting before today to hopefully discuss the project, go over some questions that everyone has, because let's be honest, this isn't really your prototypical use. A lot of people haven't seen something like, like this before. So we had a meeting last week in my office, and I'm, I'm encouraged to see some of the uh, same faces here today that I met for the first time last week. So I'm going to say a lot of, um, I apologize if I'm repetitive to some of the neighbors in attendance, but this is hopefully going to sound a little similar to when, when we had our, our meeting last week. Um, but to basically uh, short note it here, uh, this is really a unique case of a use that most people, probably before this hearing, didn't know existed, but a use that I think is, is uniquely tailored to the property at issue. Because this property, it is located pretty much right across the street from this from, from Midway Avenue, which has uh, approximately 20 or so houses. So this parcel, it's, it's uniquely placed where whatever is located there, when, all the, when these neighbors come in and out of their neighborhood every morning, go in and out of their neighborhood at night, Whatever's on this property is going to potentially impact them. And as I'm going to explain in a few minutes, our use is one that will have a hardly any impact and no discernible impact on the local community. Um, I have with me tonight uh, Haji, H-A-C-I, Kaya, K-A-Y-A, who's the Assistant Secretary of UAMA. Uh, he's willing to provide testimony and more than able to provide testimony tonight. Uh, I intended to bring... Um, individual named Abdullah Paka, P-A-C-A, who would be in, the individual in charge of this school, and he was the one who helped and spoke to some of the neighbors with me last week, but unfortunately, Mr. Paka had an emergency and is out of state tonight, um, obviously unplanned. So I have multiple members of UAMA who will be willing to testify as well. Um, everyone who I have with me tonight who can testify, who can answer questions, whether from the board or whether from the public, um, they speak English primarily as a second language. So in order for the ease of presentation and hopefully um, speed, uh, I have a proffer prepared that I would like to proceed with. And then I would obviously have my clients with me to answer any specific questions that the board has or that the community has with regard to the actual use at issue. 
if uh, the board is okay with that. So moved. All right, thank you very much. So again, um, like I said, I, I would be presenting right now the testimony of Mr. Kaya, who is the Assistant Secretary of UAMA. Um, if, when he's called to testify, he would explain that UAMA is a nonprofit that's over 40 years old and a nonprofit that has been existing here in the Bristol Township community for upwards of 17 years. Um, initially, in 2005, the organization moved here for their girls' school, which again, approximately 25 to 30 middle school aged girls, sixth, seventh, let's see, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Um, we opened that facility, it's like I said, right off Route 13 near the Village Inn. Um, the, the locations, it's been great for us for 17 years, but I mean, I, I don't think I have to tell everyone that that's not probably the most prototypical place for a school. So at this point, we're looking to move to this 139 Zimmerman Lane facility. Um, this is going to be, again, remain our second um, school in the area. The other school is at the old Immaculate Conception. That's a boys' school. Um, this, uh, <clears throat> so Uama, um as a little bit of background, it, it donates much of its resources to operating schools for children of its members. Um, these schools and the one that we're proposing here, they're boarding schools, religious boarding schools. They provide a standard education together with religious education and prayer. Uh, they are designed to not only teach children you know, school, but also how to live, how to be ethical, responsible. Basically, it's supposed to help train them how to be contributing members of society and to, in, a, in a religious manner. Um, the children will be local. They will be from the Bristol Township, Ben Salem Township, the local um, Bucks County area. Uh, the school isn't meant for children to be shipped in from afar or boarded from neighboring states or even other countries. It's, it's a local school. Um, it's also not a place for misfit children or anyone who has behavior issues as like a sort of reforming school. It's not that. Um, local parents choose to send their children to the UAMA schools because they want their children to grow up in a certain way. They want them to have a certain education and they want them to grow up in a structured environment. In fact, most of the parents have gone to schools like this previously. So it's not something that's new uh, to the community here to or culturally or religiously to us. I know that obviously uh, it may seem unusual to a lot of people here and it certainly was unusual to me when Uama first approached me about the, this project. Um, but again, they're not unusual within that religious community. Um, so how will the school function? Um, what can neighbors expect? So like I said, there's going to be between 25 and 30 um, seventh, eighth, ninth grade girls. Uh, there will be about three to four full-time staff uh, and some volunteers. Approximately two staff members will live uh, on property with the students and obviously um, to, to provide some supervision. And then a couple will come in every day in the morning, leave it in the afternoon. And again, there's also volunteers from the, uh, the membership that do help out. They currently help at our existing schools and obviously they'll, instead of going to Route 13, they're gonna come to Zimmerman Lane. Um, but we're only talking about a few people. Um, Students do their schoolwork and the religious work during the day. There is some free time, and that can be spent either in lounge areas in the building, or there's a, about a quarter of an acre of grass backyard that uh, they'll be in too. Um, just so that everyone knows, there's not gonna be a barrage of kids running up and down Zimmerman Lane, uh, nothing like that. There's gonna be no recess yards um, or, or any, like I said, notable um, change in what's gonna be actually be able to be seen from the outside of the property. Um, there's also occasion chaperone trips to go to the mall or go to Target, the movie, something like that. Uh, there's also field trips as well, just like in any you know, typical school. Uh, by and large, this is the type of use that neighbors and people even just driving by aren't even gonna know exists. Uh, first off, there's gonna be no changes to the actual outside of the building. So the building is beautiful as is, and that's one of the reasons that we like it. Um, no physical changes to the exterior footprint of the building. No changes to the warehouse. In fact, the existing tenant is gonna remain in the warehouse and the existing tenant who's gonna remain in that garage with the, uh, or the apartment above the garage, they're staying too. That's the daughter of the current owner and we've, hey, we're more than happy to let them stay. That's not a part of what we're doing. The first floor of the building, the main building, is gonna be classrooms, meeting rooms, prayer rooms. Uh, second floor is gonna be the dormitory area for the children. Now. To understand the dormitory and how this works, it's literally just for sleeping. 
it is going to be rooms with bunk beds. Children sleep there. That is literally it. There's going to be a separate locker room where they have all of their, their possessions, everything that's theirs, their clothes. That's not going to be kept in the bedrooms. The bedroom is literally a little space just for sleeping. It is completely accessory to the school use. Um, there's also, so the first floor is going to be for, again, the meeting rooms, prayer rooms, school rooms, and the lounge area. Second floor, dormitory. Third floor, there's a tiny little space that's going to be for the staff. There's going to be two staff up there. Um, there, like I said, there's a quarter of an acre of grass in the backyard that we plan on fencing in, and that's going to be, again, for a free time, you know, if you want to go out and get some fresh air. Their current space doesn't have any grass on it whatsoever, completely impervious, so that's going to be a nice change of pace, and again, one of the things that uh, we're looking forward to in the site. <clears throat> the remainder of the outside area will be parking. That's obviously required by the township ordinance. We comply with parking. We are not asking for any variance related to parking. So for all of the uses on the property, the pre-existing uses and our use, parking is good. So what other changes would anyone notice? Um, my answer to that is none, really none. Um, because of the fact that what we're proposing is a boarding establishment, you're not going to see, you know, everyone hears school, but you're not going to see a lot of the things you would typically associate with a school, whether that's traditional busing, whether that's children cars coming in and out of the property at rush hour. You're not going to see any of that. No school zones, no crossing guards, no recess yards. Basically, there won't be much of anything that you associate with a traditional school. The reason why we're asking for a variance to operate as a school is because that's the closest thing that basically uh, resembles what we do in the ordinance. Uh, so that's why we're asking for it. Um, so, like I said, students will be outside in the back every now and again to get some air, but nothing that any neighbors would notice. It's not going to be 30 kids playing organized sports or anything like that, running up and down Zimmerman. That is not going to happen. Um, there will be, again, occasional trips here or there, but again, because we only have about 25 to 30 students, we're looking at a couple of large vans and that's it. Again, no busing, nothing resembling that, no meaningful traffic whatsoever. You might have an employer or two coming in in the morning, you might have somebody coming in in the afternoon and then people leaving at night, maybe two or three. That's it. Um, so next question, if this relief isn't granted and if UAMA has to look somewhere else for their school, what else can work here? What else can go here? Um, the, the seller, is, the owner's intent on selling the property, so what can go here? So it's, loaned as a, or it's zoned as a light industrial, light manufacturing property. So the township ordinance otherwise allows by right a gym, auto repair, manufacturing, warehouse, contractors, trucking, storage. Those are some of the main uses here that would be permitted by right. And just as a practical matter, when I'm looking at the property, I look at an overhead and the layout, the thing that really makes the most sense to me would probably be a contractor. Um, you have the larger building in the front. Um, it's about 7,500 square feet. You have about 4,500 square foot warehouse to the rear, rear, along with a large open area where you can park or store items. Um, so if that happens, if a contractor comes in, you're talking about obviously noise, you're talking about traffic, you're talking about a lot of in and out at all hours of, of the day. Um, potentially if it's a landscaper that's early in the morning, you're talking about weekends, you're not gonna get any of that with us, none of it. Um, so like I said, I really genuinely believe that this use actually works in this area and works for this property. Um, in all, we understand this is a new concept for pretty much everybody here. Um, you know, we had a meeting, like I said, with some of the inter interested neighbors last week, and we went through much of the detail that we discussed here today. Um, you know, it's, it seems foreign to a lot of us, but it's uh, established and established here in Bristol. We, these, we've been existing here for 17 years. Um, as for the neighborhood, um, you know, it, it will, this will be a quiet use that maintains the, the beauty of the property, that maintains the tranquility of the area that I'm sure many of the people in this room have come to love about their community. Um, rather than some industrial operation, we're proposing something that's technically a school, but really it's, it's, it's not that, and it's not something that most people are ever going to know is there. Um, you know, to, to maintain that character, I know there were some concerns. Some of the concerns that we discussed were, you know, what if uh, down the line somebody else decides to come into the property and wants to operate a more traditional school? 
well, we're not in favor of that. And we would ask this board specifically to, if we're so fortunate enough to receive zoning relief tonight, that it be specifically conditioned on any school operating in that location be limited to 30 children and that it can only operate in accordance with the dormitory aspect that we're proposing. We don't want to be the foot that opens this door of a potential nightmare scenario for some of these neighbors down the road. Because again, that's a smaller street. It's one that probably shouldn't be able to hold and should be expected to hold the traffic that you would associate with the traditional school. But again, we're not providing that and we want that to be limited in the future. Um, like I said, I have here with me Haji Kaya. Uh, Haji, could you come up for a second? Thanks. Yes, I do. H A C I. And last name is K A Y A. Um, uh, Mr. Kaya, did you hear my presentation I just made to the board? Yes, I did. All right. Did you understand everything I said? Yes, I do. All right. Do you agree with everything I said? Yes, I do. All right. If there's anything that you would change, would you? Is there anything you would change about what I said? Uh, nothing to change to your presentation. Okay. If boards or neighbors ask you questions or more questions, and any question I may answer, but you know it's, it's perfectly presented your right. answers. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, would you be willing to adopt my presentation as if that were your testimony tonight? Yes. Okay. Um, like I said, I have multiple members of UAMA here tonight, including Mr. Kaya, who's very well versed in uh, in the organization and in what we're trying to do. I see some neighbors whose faces I do I happen to uh, I happen to recognize. Um, you know, I told them to please come tonight, not to take my word for anything. Uh, make sure to hold our feet to the fire. So, if anyone obviously has any questions, if the board has any questions, we'll be more than happy to answer those uh, right now. Thank you. Um, so, this is going to be a year-round thing. They're going to be there. Well, they have traditional breaks like, you know, any student has, whether it's for the holidays, whether that's for the summer. Um, so generally speaking, apart from that, it will be a year-round um, school. Um, the students are generally there. Um, like I said, it's a dormitory, so they're there most of the time. They do go home every two to three weeks, give or take. Their parents will come by on a Friday night or a Saturday morning, pick them up, take them home for the weekend, and they'll come back either Sunday night or Monday morning. That's every two to three weeks. So you said seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. So there would be a rotation. So the ninth graders graduate, say, this year, and then it brings 10 more new people in mm -hmm. after that, or five. Is that, it, the, is that the way it's going to work? Exactly, exactly. And, you know, obviously, just like in any school, when there's different grade groups, same thing here. So you'll have classes or you'll do whatever with your certain grade group. And even if you go outside for, you know, to get a breath of fresh air, it's not going to be 25 to 30 girls out there at the same time. It's in, in groups. Anybody else from the board? Now, as far as the school, like, what are the, what are the hours of the actual, that they're in school for? Yes. Yeah, so generally speaking, from um, the, the way it works is the parents of the students enroll their students in a sort of charter program online. So from 8.30 to 3.30, the students will be doing their classes, their coursework. And then after that, they engage in some religious education. So that takes them through most of the day. They have some free time, obviously, scattered through the day, so they don't go crazy. And they have some at night, too. Um, and most of the time when they have that free time, it's spent either in the lounge area of the building or they're outside, you know, curled up with a book or something like that. Um, generally speaking, that's kind of the schedule. Does that go for weekends as well? Um, uh, Haji, what, what, what do your students typically do on weekends? Um, e either they do, uh, you know, definitely if they stay on the premises, they, they, they take one day off. They have free time. And uh, usually Saturdays, they have a light uh, uh, instructing schedules for character education. Sundays, they just, you know, hang out in the, in the building and, you know, chat, play, um, all this stuff. Um, and, you know, it, it, every, every two, three weeks, they go home, weekends. Um, but the schedule on the, on the weekends when they stay, it's just uh, uh, one day off and one day is light uh, instructing. Religious instruction. Yeah. So, so at one time or another, though, there could be twenty to thirty kids outside at one time if there's no classes or anything uh, going on at that time. Uh, I mean, yeah. There's a possibility. 
uh, uh, there, there, the up to 30 kits, we don't have 30 kits now. Let's say it's full. Um, the 30 kits, they're going to, yes, uh, um, outside we have a balcony, they may stay, uh, stand, sit over that chat, uh, but there won't be any, uh, you know, uh, as people uh, assume it's going to be, it's not going to be a playground or, or, or playing uh, like sports. Yeah, okay. and, and we don't anticipate there ever being that many, but again, as if, if the neighbors are concerned about that, we would clearly be able to limit yeah, that. I, think I just figured you would yeah. ask, so I might as well ask it now. Yeah, no, we, we don't, you know, typically, like I said, right now, the existing school doesn't have any outdoor area. Okay. And, you know, we're not talking about, I mean, I don't know, just not your stereotypical rambunctious young kids who play sports and everything. Um, this is kind of going to be more of a, you know, just literally fresh air sort of thing. Okay. But again, if if we even that time they will be supervised. Yes, and the children are always supervised. Okay. And like I said, even you know, like in any one in any um, boarding school, there are certain times where you know, hey, you have certain trips to the mall or to Target or to the movies or something like that. So every now and again, if that happens on the weekend too. It's very rare there's gonna be 30 kids sitting there just twiddling their thumbs. All right, I have one more question. What, Councilor, what would you consider the hardship here? The hardship is, I would submit, is for this industrial property. It's, um, you have this structure on this property, this gorgeous structure, 7,500 square feet, that is not industrial. Right now, it's functioning as a yoga studio which I'm, I've never seen a 7,500-foot yoga studio before, but then again, I'm not a yoga guy. Um, I think that was kind of approved because it's potentially a gym facility. When I look at this property, I don't really see anything that fits, like fits exactly to that building that's there. A contractor might be able to work, um, but again, it's just you have this property that's industrial. It's zoned industrial with very limited approved uses and none that really makes sense. So if an applicant wanted to come in and bulldoze this, uh, this building and build a larger warehouse, they could do that, but I think that would be a severe economic hardship and also something that wouldn't be good for the community because, I mean, let's face it, that's a really nice building and I wouldn't want to live across from a warehouse rather than a really beautiful existing building. So I think the hardship relates mostly to the fact that there is not a clear use that would work on this property. And even though what we're proposing is, I believe, technically pursuant to the ordinance, an industry or industrial institutional use, um, it, it's one that really is well positioned for this property. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Go ahead, Connie. Hi, Bryce. You had mentioned um, something um, you kind of correlated that it was a charter school. Is it a charter school or a private school? It's a private school. We do not do we we do not offer that you know the educational aspect that's for the charter school. We don't offer that. Basically, the parents of the students sign them up for online cyber charter, and then they take those classes in the classrooms, and we have instructors there who help them and who will assist in tutoring or getting them through those classes. And that's actually part of the reason why these schools, especially in this area, are important. Because a lot of the parents of these children, they are, they're not born here. English is a second language. And some of them, English is not even a second language. So there's students who are born in the United States, born and raised, understand English. They learn in English. A lot of the parents, some of them aren't really able to provide that assistance, even in terms of the learning, because of that language barrier. So we do offer that here, but again, we are not a charter school. Uh, you just used the word charter when you mentioned the online school. Did this school just not qualify as a charter school for the No. Funding? Nope. Our funding is solely through tuition, and it's through our members. Our members make contributions. They make donations. There's no public funding or anything like that. Anybody else? Bob. Hello? Any more witnesses? Uh, I don't have any more witnesses now, depending on what questions that any neighbors have. Okay. I might want to introduce something. OK. Good. For, uh, for, well, hang on, we can offer them right now. What's, um, we have another neighbor from our existing school. He can come up and testify how the uses are in existing facilities. Their existing school. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I, okay. 
unless the I think that part of public comments maybe or no that, that might work I mean right now I think it makes sense maybe there's a lot of neighbors here who just heard a lot yeah. so maybe now's a good chance what, for, I, what I do is I ask anybody like to come up for or against this project so if they're for the project they may come up and speak on behalf of the project too so okay works for me okay all right so at this time we're going to take public comments all right so um, you're going to raise your hand. I'm going to tell you, come on up. So we're going to keep this, you know, a civil level here, right? So no derogatory remarks, no, you know, basically come up and, you know, state your case for the record. All right. Anybody like to come up for or against this project? Come on up, man. State your name for the record, please. Judy Troiano. E E T R O Y A N O. Yes. Two one eight Zimmerman Lane, Huneville, one nine zero four seven Pennsylvania, Middletown Township. That wasn't mentioned. We're actually Middletown Township on our side of the road. Um, so we're a little foreign here. My statement is, it's, it's more of a statement. This sounds lovely. It sounds, it sounds wonderful. But that's not personally what I'm against. What I'm against is setting a precedent about having a boarding school across the, uh, not school, boarding facility right across the street from me. Once that sets that, that rule, then what's next? What if they decide that, it's not right for them, you know, and they decide to move on. So what I'm saying is what's going to be next? Now that that has been open as a, a home for people to board, it could be anything. It could be anything from a rehab. It could be a halfway house or whatever you want to call them. I'm not sure exactly what you call them. Sober house. It could be uh, uh, some other type of school that we had never heard of, you know, that we'd have to come and do this all over again. That's my main concern. I believe that they really, truly sound like wonderful people. And I just, and I would love to get to know them in a different circumstance. That's basically all I'm saying. Thank you. Ken, I, I think we can, make a we can make a condition as a board that yes. it's only used for this app application, applicant, right, at this time, anybody that, if they go to sell or... Well, this applicant has a specific set of parameters in how they're going to operate. This applicant has a specific set of parameters which they've agreed to as a condition of approval. So if, if it were going to change, they'd have to come back for approval. So you're right. You would be back here all over again, but no one can just move in there and have a different type of boarding school or a different type of boarding setting or a drug rehab or... Or any any of the items that you mentioned. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is there something written, some sort of guarantee? Yes, to it'll say be in that the, You will not do it'll, that. It'll be in the opinion. In the opinion. Okay, it's but right. you know, I'm just curious. Because yeah, yeah. It's public. It's published, and and uh, distributed, and any neighbor that wants a copy of it, I'll be happy to provide it to you. We have to issue the opinion within 45 days after the decision's made. Okay. Ms. Triano, I would be more than happy. I'll give you my card after this, and whatever opinion the board um, lends down, I'll be more than happy to email out to you. I already have an already existing email bank for uh, some, some of your, your neighbors. I'll just add your name to the list. And what I do want to just confirm, because that's a, another concern, and I totally understand that concern, I would say that that type of use, first of all, as uh, Mr. Fetterman, the solicitor, mentioned, completely different use to what we're doing. Uh, and it's one that if someone wanted to do that on the property, they would have to come back to this board and ask for permission. And what I would say is this particular area, it's a gorgeous area. And, you know, it's funny. I, I've driven by it how many times, and I just didn't think twice. You know, I would put something like that in the same vein as if we were trying to put here, let's say, uh, a school for children or a boarding facility for children who are bad apples you know, a re like a facility disciplinary school, I would say this would not work well at all for a school like that 
Because again, a community like that with so many houses right along the way, right along a big street, I don't know if I would trust those kids. What you're getting here is something that's completely different. A school for children who want to be there, who want to grow up in this environment. A school that, again, most of my clients who are sitting here, they went to a school like that. You know, And if somebody wanted to come in even after us, I would say even though it's within the law that if somebody wanted to do that sort of a use, that they'd have to come back to this board, I would ask that this be added as a specific condition within our application that anything like that in the future, we can't do. This is purely limited to a boarding school, a boarding, religious boarding school, not disciplinary. Understand. I'm sorry, I, I don't know. I've never been to a board. But you know, it's perfectly I fine. Know, like, do this back and forth. Yeah, you can come, come up. You got to have right here. Yeah. You got to get on the microphone <laughs> for us, I'm please. Sorry. I can't. <laughs> so, all I'm saying is, you were saying it has to have an application and everything like that. Um, it's just the fact that if it gets approved as somewhere where people sleep over, I don't care if they're nuns, I don't care whatever, you know, ex-prisoners that need, well, it doesn't matter. I'll tell you this. I don't want, want it to be a boarding this, place. This board, and you're, okay. this board cares. This board cares. What they have to do is they have to, as the, the board will tell you or Mr. Fetterman will tell you, this board weighs all the factors. And I think a big factor is not just is someone sleeping there, it's who is sleeping there, it's what is sleeping there, what you're adding to this community, because again, there's a lot of different circumstances. And the reason I feel that way is because the future. Mm -hmm. Like I said, every, it sounds great, but I'm not guaranteed that this isn't gonna turn into something else. Or the neighbor decides that they wanna open up a boarding facility for some other reason. Well, you know, we're gonna have boarding facilities. I mean, I don't care if it's the YMCA opening up. It's it's just the fact that it's a boarding facility. I don't care if they're girls. I don't care if they're little boys. It's, you know, just the fact that it is a boarding facility. Yeah, the board, and, the board hears you and understands. Okay, your that's what I'm saying. Yep. I didn't want to keep coming. To no. <laughs> All right, Thank you. Uh, sir, in the back, come on up. State your name and address for the record, please. My name is Scott Elborn. Uh, e L B O R N, and I live at. I, I live at. Oh, I'm sorry. You sound like you have your testimony about the board of review decision, so hopefully they're not going to get the feedback. Yes. Uh, two three four Zimmerman Lane. I'm sort of catacorny across the property. I want to. My question is: Are they going to have any loudspeakers outside? No. No. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. No. I got that. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is, I've heard that this is a female boarding school, and I've heard people are going to stay there, two people are going to stay there permanently. Uh, the two staff will be living with the children. I've heard, I haven't heard that it's going to be women. Um, uh, yeah, the, the supervisor. Uh, two, uh, two female supervisors will be staying inside as long as the kids are inside, yes. Okay, so two women will be on the property yes, at all yes, times? Yes, all time. Okay. And again, there will also be other employees who are full-time employees, but they come in the morning, leave in the evening. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that was it. That's all I wanted to know. Okay. Thank all you right, very much. You. And by, by, by the way, Bryce, everything that's being asked, when you say yes, you're comfortable having it be part of the conditional approval? Yes, 100%. Approved. I would insist on it. Thank you. Yes, Carol Gansworth. G-A-N-S-W-O-R-T-H. Yes. 204 Zimmerman Lane. I live directly across the street from the Prince and Peacock, which is a lovely building, and I've enjoyed for many years looking at it out my window. My concern is property values. If this is... Is it, can't hear me? Is it, is better? Okay. It, property values, if they're going to decrease, um, and also the buying pool for those of us who may want to sell and retire and move to Florida maybe in a few years, if that's going to narrow the buying pool, when people come to look at our home, they're going to see that it's a boarding school. They're not going to want to buy the home, and property values could go down because of this. It's a lovely neighborhood. It is very quiet. Um, 
And I, yeah, that's my main concern. If, if I may, Miss, uh, and I th thank you very much for being here tonight. Um, what I would say is I understand your concern. And typically with a traditional school, I would say that's potentially a valid concern. You have the buses, you have school zone, you have kids running around, you have just the noise and commotion of whether it's a recess, whether it's just kids getting picked up or getting dropped off. In a school like this, a lot of those traditional concerns don't apply because we don't have any of that. I mean, we're not even gonna have a sign in front of the property. So most people aren't even gonna know what's there. And like I mentioned, the alternative, you have a, the current owner's interest in selling the property and it's technically an industrial property. So if we don't go there, then you might have something like a contractor there. And I would say that, you know, if you have a contractor across the street who's coming and going at all times with potentially larger equipment, that's something that could potentially have an impact on your property. There's value. also a lot of other uses that could be in that building. It's a beautiful building. It's, it could be a wellness center. It could be a law firm. It could be a physician's office. There could be many other things besides a loud contractor's office that could move in there. Well, what I would say to that is those uses are not permitted. So they would have to go through the same process we're here tonight. Understood. And, I know yeah, that. And what yeah. I would also say is uses like that, you'd have more people coming and going. And something like this one, you don't. Like I said, we're not even going to have a sign in front of the building. So the average person will be like me for the past 10, 15 years, driving by and not even knowing what's there. I understand. But just the word boarding school is going to, you know, people aren't going to take kindly to that. Yeah, if they're looking to move into a neighborhood. Well, that, that's one of the reasons why, you know, it's, it's on, when you go through the zoning process, you, you have to, whatever your use is, whatever it's most similar to in the code, that's what you ask for relief from. So here, the most similar uses were school and dormitory. So that's why we asked for that, even though what we're proposing is a little unique. So it's not technically a boarding school. It's not technically a dormitory. It's kind of like its own hybrid, but something that, again, is just, unusual for someone like me and you. <laughs> well, that's my concern. Property values and, you know, narrowing the buying pool for those of us who may want to sell our home. And I, I have our, our realtor here who might be able to give a more. And you know what? I don't think I would even believe what the realtor would have to say today because I'm pretty adamant that it would lower my house value. Oh. Yeah, hang, hang on one second here. Sorry, but. No, no. Uh, Hodges, if you speak. Can... Yep. Um, yeah, similar presentations and uh, a technically uh, similar application we had in the past. And uh, similar questions were asked to us, you know, is this institution, whether a religious institution or a place of worship or a school, uh, uh, neighbors had, uh, you know, certain similar questions in the past. And 90, not 99%, 100%, what we presented in the past for other locations came out true, and all the neighbors are happy for our organization. Uh, I'm relating to a place in Clifton, New Jersey, a place in Chicago, a place in Long Island, and, and we were asked almost similar question. I, ha I have a, a real estate a background. I hold a, a real estate broker license. I don't practice, but what, she's, what the concern she had she's having now is the least factor on uh, home values. I'm not saying it has no factor, but it's the least. Uh, there are many other factors that, you know, affect home values. Uh, the neighboring properties affect somehow, but this use, uh, I, I say none, but, you know, uh, they, may, they, they, they could be exaggerated, but it's going to be least. Second one is the traffic. Uh, our users, whether it's a house of worship or this use, um, is the, is the uh, least uh, users, and usually it happens off peak times. So it's not going to have any adverse effect on neighboring properties. That, that's the uh, uh, question we were asked, that's, that is the answer we, were, we, gave, we have given, and that's the result came out. Uh, similar properties, similar neighborhood, we can you know, have our neighbors go visit, ask neighbors to ask questions whether those people are bothering you, or not, uh, they can get the uh, true answers, not that testimony that we're giving over here. Thank you. I mean, let's be honest, we're really not sure one way or the other whether it's gonna affect the property value at all, right? It's, well, it's the unknown, like, that's scary. Kind of, well, it's, yeah, you don't, 
don't know if it's going to lower You know, you it don't or, know. Yeah, right. It's very hypothetical. Well, yeah. it kind of is. Yeah. It is hypothetical, but I do believe that it will. And I, like I said, if we do I'm decide not to sell, it's not a good question. It's just in like, two years from now, I think it's going to narrow the buying pool. I mean, when they hear there's a boarding school across the street, come on, it's definitely going to have an effect on future buyers. And, and what I would also say is, I believe our our realtor, I think, uh, um, Halal, um, sold a property, a residential property near our prior girls' school. Is that right? Yes. Right here, why don't you? Yes. Halal Tarkman, first name is H-I-L-A-L, -L, last name T-U-R-K-M-E-N. Now, uh, Halal, if, if I could, I'm pretty sure, you have you sold a residential home near our current girls' school, the one near Route 13? Yes, I did, uh, right across the street from it. And any trouble selling that? Any questions that came up in the process? And anything that you can tell this border to tell the neighbors to you know potentially ease that concern um, we had absolutely no concerns from any agents or potential or prospect buyers regarding that matter in fact the buyer that did purchase the property is kind of upset that we're moving out because they believe that we were bringing in some peace and quiet and security instead of someone else moving into that property because the kids aren't doing anything and they know who we are and what we stand for. And we have an open door policy. So if there's ever an yes, issue. Yes, we do have an open door policy. People can come across, knock on the door and, and, and talk to uh, and talk to us and we'll obviously address it. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. The instructors are always there to answer any questions and people are always welcome to take a tour. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. No problem. And, and you know, I, I, I understand this concern and I know, you know, um, what I will say is we have, again, 25 locations in, in, in the country, and we have multiple in this area, and we haven't experienced or seen any of those issues in terms of residential real estate values going down because of our, our um, institutions. I know that what I say only says so much and only goes so far, but you know that's just something that I can confirm for what it's worth. All right. No. Um, anybody else? Come on up, man. Hi. Cheryl Benigno? Yes. C H E R Y L Benigno, B E N I G N O. 37 Midway. 37 Midway? Yes, ma'am. I do. I like to say I was at the meeting. I did meet the people. They're very nice. I think what they're doing is great. I don't think it's right for our neighborhood. One of the reasons is the property value. If somebody can guarantee me that it's not going to affect us selling our houses in the future, fine. I also don't also necessarily believe about the traffic. They have to bring in the food for the luncheons and the dinners. So there's gonna be more people coming in for that. He originally said there were two people staying there. In his presentation earlier, he said there were four. So I'm not sure there are four or there are two. So there's two people staying there, potentially mm -hmm. in the future when the tenant in the existing apartment over top of the garage, when they leave, maybe one or two will go over there. I'm not sure, but for right now in the foreseeable future, it's gonna be two on the third floor. And that's it. There's there's 30 kids, 25 kids for two people. I'm sure everybody has kids or grandkids or nieces or nephews to have that many people with just two supervisors. I think that's a lot. So I just to address that briefly, um, I would agree with you. Um, but what I would also say is for most of the waking day, there's not going to be two people there. There's going to be more instructors and volunteers and at night so when there's more people coming in well well th what i would also say to that is you know we have a 7500 square foot building and if the school doesn't go there if our build business doesn't go there i don't want to say business because it's a nonprofit. you're going to have either an office doctor's office you know professional office contractor 
way, way more people. I mean, that's a giant building. So you're gonna have 20, 30 employees coming to and from in the morning and in the afternoon. What we're talking about is two or three people. So, I mean, yes, there's gonna be a couple people coming and going, but it's so few that you're not really gonna notice it. So I, I understand your concerns. I understand the concerns about property value, and I wish I could show you something definitive, but I know if I, even if I say anything, you know, you're gonna generally believe me, but you know, you're gonna think it's self-serving. I understand that. <laughs> um, you know, all I can tell you is, I, I, in my experience doing this work, doing real estate work, you know, the factors at play in terms of lowering values, it's not just, oh, is there a school nearby, or is this, that, this nearby, or that. It's the actual underlying factors. It's whether or not there's traffic, whether or not there's nuisance. There's people going look at a house, and there's kids throwing a ball around and running into the street, and they're sitting there going, oh my lord, I don't want to live here. Yeah, That's the type of I don't of thing. necessarily, I don't see how you can guarantee that we wouldn't have that. Well, there's going to be a fence, and generally speaking, they don't, the, this school has existed for 17 years already, and the girls don't go out and play sports or anything like that. So we don't anticipate it's going to be something that's going to just start overnight. The where it is now, is it a house or is it a building? It's a building. All right, it's all right. We got we got to get out of control here. So oh, sorry. Just, like, I'm sorry. Right. I was just asking, is it a house or a building where the school is currently? All right. You can come on up and answer. Not you, sir. Hold on. <laughs> so the two locations that we have, they're both buildings. Um, one is currently as a mosque. Another one is a mosque slash building, the previous immaculate building that we have. Thank you. So the people that are upset that you're moving from where you are, are they here tonight? That we're moving? Mm -hmm. Mike, come on, you got to come up in the mic. No. No, my past clients are not here. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, one more. Anybody else? Come on up. Uh, Beata Jelonek. Uh, B E A T A. B E A T A. J E L O N E K. I do. Um, 30 midway. 30? 30, yeah. Um, so I, I have a question. So this is like a 7,500 square foot building, correct? And I just want to know how you would fit 30 uh, kids, like teenage kids pretty much, in a building like that. Like, because at home we have two kids and it's like chaos. So I just want to see how 30 kids in this kind of building would be would work. Yeah, sh sure. Um, so I get what you're saying. Uh, I've been there myself when I was a few years ago. Um, so what we're going to have, it's not going to be 25 to 30 kids just having free range of the place. You know, it's going to be structured like any school you would find. So they're going to be in class. They're going to be in class during the day. They're going to be in class during the afternoon. And during the late afternoon, they're going to be in prayer sessions. So it's very structured. And the lower level basically the, um, the rooms that we're gonna have, they're gonna be larger meeting-sized rooms or class-sized rooms. Um, so I would say that as part of the, the reality of it. Um, what I would also say is our existing property, the property we've had for 17 years, it's smaller and the building is smaller mm -hmm. and we're not really increasing our t t students or anything. So it works at the current place and the new one, it's gonna have a larger footprint so there's gonna be more room essentially. And I, I know is that there a limit as to like is that like thirty is max? Is that how it thir works? Thirty is max, and that's is what that we would the max? we would ask the board and to what strictly if, what limit that. What if there was more kids or something like that? What if there's another student that came along? So thirty one. Well, what I would say is, if the board is, has that concern, then we would submit and say, as a condition, we'll provide roles on an annual basis to the township, and the township, just like any property, any use, any business, any residence. If the township needs to inspect or wants to come in for an inspection, they can come in at their leisure. And again, we're an open door policy. Right. So if any of the neighbors want to come on in, even not 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 a problem. We yeah. Again, I also had the the you know with the traffic too that concern with the traffic, also the concern with the home value. You know, all of us um, we take care of our houses. We all value our houses, making sure you know we do live in a quiet area. I don't know if you 
it's you've yeah. driven by, but it's a really, really quiet area, and you know, all of us do care about our property um, and the value of it um, mm -hmm. as well. I completely um, understand, and that's one of the reasons why. I know I may look young, <laughs> you know, like I, I, I plan on living there for a while, so I just want to make sure that you know. Oh. That's one of the things that drew us to the to the area is the yeah. fact that again, it's quiet. It's a nice it's family quiet. oriented area, and that's one of the things that we want. Which is one of the one things that we haven't had for seventeen years. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, I don't have anything against them. I, I yeah. just want to know. No, like, for sure. Know. And you know, like I said, I, I can't say any more than I've already said about the property value. I I, I understand the concern. I don't yeah. think you really have to worry about that. But what I can say about the traffic is traffic, yeah. literally any other use that would come into this site is gonna be worse on traffic for you than ours will. Literally any other use. If you go down the list, we have maybe two or three people in the morning, a person in the afternoon who, because the way the food works is where it's made off site and somebody comes in the early afternoon, drops it off and that's it. And then all 30 kids would be living upstairs. Yes, I'm well I wouldn't say living, it's it's just for sleeping, that's it. Okay. So that's like almost everybody hold, that's hold in on here. Hold on one second, you submitted a plan, a floor plan. Yes, floor plan. Is this plan. the way it's gonna be? That's the way it's going to be. Okay. Okay, I think I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And All right, so you got, what do you got? One more. Uh, two quick questions about the sewage uh, of 30 people. Is there any changes for that? Or does Middletown have uh, qualifications for so much sewage per, per amount of people? Bristol Township. I mean, Bristol, I mean, no, Bristol, yeah. You, you, it does, and this is only the first stage. There's gonna be a land development stage after this that we have to work with the township, with the township professionals, with the township engineer to go through all that. Okay. And if we can't comply, then we can only have as many people in the building as we can comply with. So that's something that we have to work with them on. It's not mistaking the building only has a, a bathroom or two, or I think. There's, there's gonna be significant interior okay. fit outs. Okay. And so there will be construction then? Yes, sir. Okay. Interior, yes. Interior, yeah. The outside is going to stay the same. We like it as much as everybody else does. And since this is a nonprofit and I'm not really schooled on taxes, does that affect Bristol's tax base? Because I know this, this building brings in a, a lot of taxes every year. Does, does that change? The, the assessed value yeah. um, probably will go up because whenever you pull permits and the county finds out about it, they may reassess the property. Mm -hmm. So we hope that the property will be worth more once we make our changes. That's all I had. Thank you. All right, come on up. Hi, it's Sandra Salatnik, S-A-L-E-T. And IK, 76 Midway. Sure. Yes, I just have some quick questions. You keep mentioning cyber charter. Who is paying for the cyber charter? The, the parents of the students signed them up for that. We don't have any role in that. And it's not ran through a school district whatsoever, a cyber charter. I'm, like I said, it's the, the parents take care of it and we just kind of shepherd the kids as they do their programs and if they need assistance, then we're there on, on site to assist them. You know, they don't, they don't just do it themselves. Okay. Um, so with the traffic, I read in your letter that you sent out last week mm -hmm. that sometimes you have craft fairs, you have some type of festival after Ramadan. That's in your letter you oh. sent us last week. Yeah, I, I mean, every now and again we'll have a community of So that will bring in more traffic, correct? What? I mean, I can have one of our members test. So I just have a quick question. Sure. Midway is very narrow. Will you be parking on Midway Ave Never. for those activities or events? No. And what I would say to that is the township mandates that we supply adequate parking. We're going to have over 30 parking spaces because the township mandates that. Even though we're going to be a boarding school, essentially, and the kids aren't old enough to have cars, so there's going to be a lot of excess parking back there. So that's never going to be a problem. And then I just have a question about the building. Is the building safe for 30 children? A sprinkler system, fire escape for firemen, all those type of exits, or you'll be putting yes. all that in for them? 100%, and what I would say is you don't have to trust me because this does to go through a land development process, mm -hmm. and the township engineer, the township fire marshal, they have to submit review letters, and if we can't comply, then we can't open, no matter what this board decides. 
Two more questions about the staff on the site. Will you have a nurse on the site for the students? I don't believe it's going to be a nurse full time. We have obviously first aid and whatnot, um, but there's no licensed medical professional there 24 7. But um, again. Oh, you'll be running the school? We'll be running, generally no speaking. Nurse. Well, again, <laughs> it's the type of thing where, you know, obviously if there's something significant that happens on site, you know, our, our educators will be trained in how to respond to that, but they are not licensed medical professionals. All right. Um, I think that was my last question. Yeah. And if you do reach that maximum capacity of 30 students, will that mean right now you're talking about two staff? So when you reach more students and you reach your maximum capacity, will you be adding more staff? So the two staff, that's just the staff who actually sleep over and stay there with the students. During the day, at all times, there will be more than two people there, more than two staff. Mm -hmm. Typically, we have three to four mm -hmm. employees on site, plus there are oftentimes volunteers from our congregation. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And I, I know that we've had a lot of public comment, but I think we have the neighbor from our other property who might be able to offer some insight. Carla Rodriguez. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been on them for five years already, and they've been such a great person, and they always keep their word, and I haven't had no complaints with them. And that'll be it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Anybody else? All right. So I need a motion for the board for or against this application. I'll make a motion for. I need a second. I'll second. Call the board, Mr. Secretary. Mark DeMarcus. No. Jim McMahon. Mm, no. I, I, I just don't think this, this creates a hardship. I'm sorry. Um, it does. Ed Murphy, yes. Second, Bryce. All right. Are right, we going to take a five minute recess to uh, talk this over? Because we have a split. Split board, so um, I'm just gonna do a little sidebar.
Okay. Cindy, you good? Okay. All right. Um, okay. After uh, further conversation with the board, we're at a two two split, and previously, uh, uh, at a two two split, it's it's a no. So basically the status quo stays the same. So you need, you need the majority to get to come in front of the vote. If you can't if there's not a majority, you're less than machine conservative. Mm -hmm. uh, th th thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Um, I will be issuing a letter within twenty four hours. All right, so next on the agenda is Keith and Florence Davis, 4500 Newportville Road, Newportville, PA. all night I know I know that was my mistake it's running a little late this afternoon <laughs> so it's your counsel for for this applicant everything else okay all night to me. All right. Go for it. All right. Good Good evening, board. Bryce McWilliam from Begley Carlin here on behalf of Keith and Florence Davis. They are the owners of the property located at 4500 Newportville Road. Uh, the, the property is a 0.12 acre or 5200 square foot parcel. It's currently zoned R1 residential. Uh, it fronts both Newportville Road and Nickel Avenue and is presently improved by a single family home with a first floor wraparound deck around the front of the house. We're here today for one of the board's favorite types of cases, a, a resident who didn't get a permit. <laughs> I, I warned my client. <laughs> so uh, Keith began work on a raised deck that replaces part of the first floor wraparound deck without getting a permit. Now, the Hold, hold your ears, board. Keith is a union carpenter who should have known to get a permit. He got them in the past when he built the second floor of the home with an attic. He got them in the past when he put, built a $70,000 retaining wall around his home. That's actually really, really gorgeous. Um, as you'll hear, he thought he didn't need one, or Keith and Florence, they had a discussion about it. They felt they didn't need one or convinced themselves they didn't need one because they were replacing part of an existing deck with a new one. So they said, ah, it's a wash. 
Well, unfortunately, that's not the way the world works. Uh, so for a little bit of background here, uh, Keith and Florence bought the house in 1981. It was originally a rancher. He added a second floor, added an attic, added the deck, added the retaining wall. The house looks really nice now. He's done a lot of good work over 40-some years. Um, and I think as, you know, the neighbors would say, it's, it's really a nice home in the area. Um, the new deck, it'll not only make the home even, you know, more beautiful, but it serves a practical purpose too. Uh, a few years ago, Keith was diagnosed with CMT, which is a nerve disorder that impacts um, your ability to be mobile. Um, it can wait for how many years to strike, or it can strike tomorrow, no one really knows. So eventually, he's going to have trouble getting around. The living main living area of the home and the main sleeping area, the master suite, is on the second floor. So the raised deck is ideally going to be there so that you know he doesn't have to go up and down the, uh, the steps to get some fresh air you know, in his latter years. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, as, as you'll hear uh, from the man himself, Keith uh, didn't get that permit. Um, you know, the, the old deck, the part, you know, that we were replacing, what I would submit is, because we need, I believe it's four variances here tonight. Let me see. Yeah, four variances. And, you know, it sounds like a lot. It, it really isn't. And let me go through it a little bit before I uh, bring Keith up here to uh, uh, get to take it on the chin. Um, the first variance we're asking for is for side yard setback. The house is already non-conforming with respect to the side yard. It's got a side yard setback of four feet. We're just maintaining that. We're maintaining that for that edge upward through the new deck. Um, the second variance is front yard setback. That's rather straightforward. Um, the existing wraparound deck, the part we removed, we're basically extending three feet out from that. So we're pushing into the front yard setback an additional three feet. Um, you know, so it was originally 18, now it's going to be 15. Um, so that's the front yard setback variance. And if he came to me before time, then I probably would have told him to chop off the three feet and not ask for it. But, you know, unfortunately, we're here after the fact. Uh, we need a variance for building coverage because technically a raised deck constitutes building coverage. So with the raised deck, we're going to be at 21%. We're supposed to be at 20%, so it's 1% difference. The last variance is for impervious surface. Now, the deck itself, there's going to be grass underneath, but it's going to be tiled over, so it will count as impervious. Um, what I would submit to the board, and you know, unfortunately we don't have exact measurements, but we're removing part of the existing deck, which had gravel underneath, and so the amount we're adding over and above the existing deck, it's about 63 feet pursuant to our calculations. The amount we're removing of the existing deck, additional with the gravel underneath, is 70 feet, so it looks like we're maybe under by 7 feet. But at the end of the day, we're talking about a really, really small portion here and Keith has it all fit out in terms of uh, stormwater as well. So those are the variances. I have Keith and Florence Davis with me tonight. Uh, they're the owners of the property, longtime residents of the township. Um, I know that we've already been here for quite a bit, um, but I have Keith to come up here and say hi, apologize, and answer some questions. I do. Keith Davis. <clears throat> All right. uh, Keith, you're the owner of 4500 Newport Bill Road, is that correct? Yes. How long have you owned the property? 40 some years. All right. You heard everything I said in my opening? Yes. You, is all that accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Do you agree with all of it? Excuse me? Do you agree with all of it? Yes. Uh, is there anything you would change? But just what I said, not permits. Is there anything you'd change? No. All right. Would you adopt that testimony as if it were your own? Excuse me? Would you adopt what I said as if it was your own yes. testimony? Absolutely. All right. So you didn't get a permits. Why not? Well, I wasn't thinking clearly at the time. We talked it over. I, t I had said that we should get a permit. And uh, my wife, I agreed with my wife, and we didn't get the permit. It was my oh, so you're blaming your wife. Well, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> well not, not necessarily, but uh, uh, there was a lot going on back then, too, because, you know, the COVID and stuff was going on. I wasn't thinking right, and lumber was going way up, so I kind of pushed, pushed the issue. All right, and since then, the township sent you a letter, and you stopped working on it, right? Yes, yes. And then. Now you're paying me, right? Right. Yeah. All right. I'm not here for free for you, am I? Okay. Um, 
So with respect to this deck, you need it because, again, you want it for looking forward to the future, you know, if and when you start having some trouble getting around? Yes. All right. Um, now, obviously, the board's heard everything I said. They've heard, been through a number of these presentations. If they have any questions, you'll be more than happy to answer those right now. Yep. All right. Board, is any questions? Any questions for Keith? Anybody? I have one. Bob, were you able to go out and inspect this deck and... You know, does it comply with your codes? I'm sorry, how are you speaking to me? Oh. I was asking Bob if he was able to go and inspect the deck, and does it comply with the codes? I, I know, not you know, not the zoning codes, but building codes. Yeah, I, I myself do not inspect the building codes. We have a third-party inspector for that, but the first stop is in permits is to obtain approval from zoning. So with the red flag, that zoning, he needs approval in the zoning process, and then Bush will review it as a building code. Anybody else? Yeah, Ken. So say you can condition the approval on that it passes inspection or meets the... If it doesn't meet the approval of Rich's uh, request, and if it's, it's going to be torn down. Don't right, that. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. I just didn't no, no, it's a perfectly valid question. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> it's just saying it's not really an issue in, the, in that sense. Keith, do you understand, like, we, like, People that come in front of us that didn't get permits, we've made them tear stuff down. I mean, literally, there's, you know, patios, you know, carports. It, it like, this is like a big deal for me personally. Mm -hmm. You know, I say it almost every meeting. You need a permit for everything. So I, it's just a comment. I, I don't really have a question for you, but you know, please. But, I mean, this is the way I feel about it. You're kind of wasting this board's time because you did not get a permit. Mm -hmm. but that's, a, that's exactly how I feel about it. Right. I, you know, it sounds very selfish of me, but that's the way it is, you know? So that's all, that's all I got. Bob, anything to add to it? Nothing to add, no. no. Anybody else have any questions? <laughs> Anybody out in the audience like to come up for or against this project? Come on up, sir. Check it once for Madeja. M A D E J A. Yes. Four four zero two Nickel Avenue. I'm at the top of the dead end street, Nickel Avenue. To get to his property, you still have to go. I have to go. We're all on the same street. But I'm not Newportville Avenue. I'm Nickel. So I'm just here for character or engineering support. I've worked with him as he's contracted before and seen the work that he's done with a contractor. So I know his engineering background. Also, I wasn't sure the legal definition of intrusive so I thought that meant it was an eyesore but to me it's not an eyesore since I've been living there 30 something years my property value has just been going up so anything he's done to his place hasn't hindered my, the value of my house but and I'm here it's just as no just known as engineering background and sound structure on building stuff so Okay, that's thank all, you. That's all I have. Anybody else? All right, you know what I need now? I need a motion to accept or deny this application. I'll make a motion to accept the application. I need a second. I'll second. All right, call the board, Mr. Secretary. Mark DeMarcus. Yes. Jim McMahon. Yes. Colleen Dunn. Yes. Ed Murphy, yes. All right, there you go. Everybody good? You need five minutes, ten minutes, everybody? No? All right. Uh, next is um, 
Romana Enterprises Corporation, 1350 Street Road, Ben Salem, PA, 19020. Please come on up. Good evening, board. Hey, what are you doing here? Bryce McGuigan from Begley Carlin, here on behalf of the applicant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks for having me again. Thanks for staying so long. Appreciate it. Um, I'm here tonight also on behalf of Rahmani Enterprises Corporation. That's the equitable owner of the property at 1111 Veterans Highway. The property is owned C Commercial. It's also part of the TC Overlay District. It's about a 0.62 acre parcel. It's currently vacant apart from some concrete and paving that remains from the prior use. Um, our proposal is to build about approximately 2,300 square foot building that's going to be used as a Popeye's fast food restaurant. Uh, the restaurant will have a drive through that will have two separate drive through ordering stations. It will have the ability to stack 11 spaces, and we're also going to have 20 designated parking spaces as well. Um, lots of bit on the small side, and there's some buffering issues with respect to the institutional middle school property to the rear. So we do need a bit of uh, variances, a bit of relief. Uh, specifically, we need impervious surface uh, coverage variance to allow 74.3%. Uh, we are asking for a variance to allow two street trees where six are otherwise required. A variance for 6.5 foot parking setback from the ultimate right of way where 25 feet is otherwise required to permit a structure and commercial activity within the buffer yard, a reduction in width and the planting schedule for the buffer yard, and 20 off street parking spaces where 55 are otherwise required. And last but not least, one or zero loading spaces where one is otherwise required. Uh, it seems like a lot, but when we boil down to the actual reasons for it and the explanations and the just general how it fits in the overall area, it really isn't that much. Uh, I have with me here um, Nazif Rahmani, the owner of Rahmani Enterprises, together with our engineer, Justin Giannotti, uh, to just basically summarize, because I know we're running a little late. Um, you know, like I said, Mr. Rahmani is the owner of Rahmani Enterprises. He um, develops Popeyes. He's done a number of them so far. So what we've done is we've identified this property partially because obviously it's been a vacant for a while. It's kind of an eyesore and we're trying to develop it in accordance with what's going on on Veterans Highway in general. Um, I know we're, we're going to be a little down for the Dunkin Donuts, but you already see a bunch of fast food popping up in terms of McDonald's, Wendy's, Taco Bell, and hopefully next to Popeyes. Um, with respect to the property, like I said, it's, uh, it, it's vacant apart from some paving. Um, it's a good size for the property, but the issues revolve in setbacks and buffer yards, especially with that buffer yard to the rear where you have, um, I, I believe, Roosevelt Middle School. So to go through the variances um, and the explanations for those, obviously the first one's impervious surface of 74.3%. That basically reflects a lot of what's going on in the area in general. It's a commercial area. You need a decent amount of paving. And if you look at all the other parcels directly adjacent to ours, whether it's the Dunkin' Donuts or the other businesses, there's impervious rates um, matching that, exceeding that. It's, again, standard for the area. And we have our engineer here who, if the board has any questions, he's obviously developed the stormwater management plans for the property. And um, we know we'll obviously have to work with the township on that moving forward. Um, with respect to uh, trees, uh, the ordinance requires six street trees. There really aren't street trees in that area, and especially for this use. If you have a whole bunch of street trees, no one's going to be able to see it. No one's going to be able to read the signs. So it doesn't really make sense. So that's why we're asking for two, whereas six are otherwise required per the ordinance. Um, with respect to the additional foliage and landscaping variances, um, those involve the buffer yard. Um, because there's an institutional property to the rear, a 25-foot buffer is required. Um, obviously, in this particular situation, you've got a giant parcel with Roosevelt Middle School behind us. Uh, the di di distance between us and the actual school building is over 700 feet. And we're actually directly abut their, their track and their baseball field. So there's a whole lot of green space already back there. So in terms of the buffer yard, I would submit that there's not really much of a reason to practically provide uh, a 25-foot buffer yard in that area, which is why we're asking for that to be uh, reduced and for the planting schedule to be altered. And obviously, we're going to work with the township on filling that buffer anyhow. Um, we're also requesting a variance for to per permit actual commercial activity within that buffer yard. And the reason for that is for our parking, our, not our parking, uh, our drive-through area and our pass-through lane, you need that space in order to accommodate the flow for the site. So that's what that variance is related to. Um, the last variances all deal with parking. 
Uh, we're going to be providing 20 spaces. The ordinance requires one space every 50 feet. I'll tell you this, uh, I've been to a couple Popeyes and there's not nearly that many people in there. Primarily a drive through based restaurant, which is why we've, uh, we've incorporated 11 stacking spaces and part of the benefit to that is there's also an internal stack so we contain the traffic on site. So even if there's more cars in that backing up, it's gonna be internal to the site. There's zero risk of vehicles backing up on the Veterans Highway. But again, it's a drive through based establishment. So that's why we're providing the 20 spaces, which will be more than sufficient for the, the employees and customers who choose to dine in. Um, the other parking variance relates to the setback. Uh, we're asking for to have parking within 6.5 feet of the alternate right of way. Um, again, this deals with the fact that just it's a more narrow parcel, so we need that additional space. And again, it echoes what's going on in the local area as well. Most vehicles park alongside the veterans in close proximity to that. So again, we're just doing what's in the area now, what was previously on the property too. Uh, and the last part, uh, the last variance related to parking is required, um, they required off street loading spaces. So one is required technically, but we don't really, that's not our operation. We don't need a designated loading area. That's not how loading is done at this uh, restaurant. My client will be more than happy to come off and explain in detail if the board would like. Um, but I know we've been here for a while. Uh, so, <laughs> so with that, I, I, I have uh, my, my, my client, um, Ms. Eve, come up real quick. N-A-Z-I-F. Ramani, R-A-H-M-A-N-I. Yes, I do. All right. Uh, good evening, Nazif. Thanks for being here. Um, did you hear everything I told the board? Yes, I did. All right. Uh, did you understand everything I told the board? Yes, I do. Do you agree with it all? Yes. If I asked you if there was something you would want to change about what I said, would you change anything? Uh, yes, I would. What would you change? Well, no. Uh, 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 well, uh, it, it just that the, uh, the drive-through lane with the um, double drive-through, that's the purpose of us having double drive-through because we're not going to have much uh, parking necessary based on the experience that I have with Popeye's operation. And so, so for that reason, that's why it's, it's double drive through. And how many Popeye's have you had experience with for operating? Um, oh, oh, I have three Popeye's that are with drive throughs Okay. And so in your experience, the drive through that you're proposing for this will work in terms of traffic flow and circulation? That's correct. All right. And that's why you're only, well, that's why we're offering 20 spaces because that's an amount that you believe based on your experience in operating three different Popeye's in the area that's sufficient for what your restaurant's gonna use? Yes, that's correct. All right. um, now, after hearing my little presentation that I made to the board just now, would you adopt what I said to the board as if it were your testimony? Yes. All right. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to add, please feel free. No. No? Okay. All right. Uh, if the board has any questions or if the board would like to hear from our engineer, Mr. Giannotti, I'll be more than happy to address those at this time. Any questions from the board? Uh, I just have one question. So how do you, load and unload all your supplies and stuff? The, the, these are dropped overnight. Um, we have two suppliers, two vendors. One is for uh, uh, primarily for chicken, and the second is for the boxes. And uh, uh, neither of them use the truck, 18-wheeler uh, uh, trucks, and um, they come uh, during the night. They have a drop key, and normally it's, it's you know, anywhere between 11 p.m. and, and four, in the, 4 in the morning. To piggyback off of that question, there's uh, at no point am I going to ride by there and see a truck on Veterans Highway being unloaded for your restaurant. Uh, no, I, I can't say that because there's obviously delays. There's, you know, trucks, yes. Mainly they're scheduled to come during the night. Yes, there are times that they would come uh, during the day. I mean, that's something that's beyond our control. That's just uh, the, the vendors. That's just, just the way they... Uh, I think it's... So it's part of, yeah, you got to control, that is what I'm getting at. You have to control that. Sure. You know, because yeah. it's, that's, that's what the, the off-street park loading zones are for, mm -hmm. for that reason. So there's nobody on that Veterans Highway unloading chicken from, for your restaurant. No. Yeah, that, that, that could, couldn't happen on Veterans Highway. No. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, Any vehicle, even if you uh, get. Counselor. Yes, it can. I've seen cars <laughs> being unloaded on Veterans Highway. That's a scary thought. Yeah. So don't tell me it can't happen because I've seen it happen. So. 
let me let me put it to you this way. So generally speaking, in terms of your loading, the reason why we're not asking for a loading space nor why we're not providing one is because you generally don't need that because of the hours of delivery, right? Right, that's correct. And you will make sure to can to and you will condition this on scheduling deliveries for off beat hours for 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. like you mentioned, is that correct? That's correct, yes. And apart from once in a blue moon, if there is some sort of an issue, deliveries will happen regularly in late night hours where there's gonna be nobody there and it will happen on your property and be contained within the parcel, is that right? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? What do you anticipate your operating hours to be? It, it has to be uh, over 11 and a half hours. So typically it's 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Anybody else? Bob. I can add just Ken? Anybody in the audience? Oh. Bryce, you may want to have your engineer come up and run through where these variances of the minimum needed. I will ha happily do that. Do we want to maybe, do we want the... Uh, no, we'll, we, we'll get back to you, sir. We'll just let's bring the engineer sure. up, please. All right, thanks. <coughs> Don't want to start here. Good evening, everyone. Sure. Justin Ginotti. Gina, it's G-E-O-N-N-O-P-T-I. Yes, I do. Uh, good evening, Justin. Good Please evening, Bryce. introduce yourself to the board. Good evening, everyone. My name is Justin Ginotti. I'm a professional engineer licensed in Pennsylvania, currently working with Dynamic Engineering as a senior principal and the regional manager of Pennsylvania. Have you testified at hearings such as this one before? Yes, I've been uh, accepted by this board previously many times. All right. Uh, I would like to introduce Mr. Thank you very much. It's acceptable. Perfect. Um, it's so acceptable. Justin, have you had do you have a chance to listen to the spiel I gave to the board earlier? Yes, sir, I did. All right. Um, true and accurate to the best of your knowledge, those facts? Yes, sir. All right. If I asked you to adopt those as your testimony, would you do that? Yes. All right. Now, with respect to the project, did you prepare the plans that the board is looking at before them tonight? Yes, I did. All right. Uh, you're familiar with the variances that we're requesting and the variances that I went over with the board? Yes. All right. Based upon your knowledge, uh, experience, and expertise, um, are those variances the least possible variances to afford relief in this matter? Yes, for this application, correct. Those variances will allow the, the equitable owner, Mr. Romani, to reasonably use this property? Yes. All right. You're also familiar generally with the property at issue, is that right? Yes. All right. And is there any reason you can think of here tonight why this property would be um, ill-positioned to have a Popeye's serving chicken sandwiches into the future? No, the, the layout of the facility, the layout of the property is well conditioned and well suited for this application. All right, and with respect to, to parking, circulation, the drive-through, loading, any issues that you see, any complications that um, would give you pause in terms of moving forward with this project? No. All right, and obviously we're gonna be working with the township as we move forward to ensure that uh, circulation and all vehicular traffic issues abide by township code, correct? That's correct. All right, if the board has any questions for Mr. Giannotti, um, he'll be more than happy to address them at this time. Anybody have any questions? No traffic studies, Bryce? No. no. I, will, I will say one thing I wanted to add to his, his, his line of questioning was also PennDOT. So we're on PennDOT Road. We've already reached out to PennDOT for a scoping meeting. The driveway, as you see it here, is based on PennDOT's feedback to align it with uh, the window road on the other side of the street. And we're gonna be working with them for the HOP process and for signal per timing improvements. HOP process, highway occupancy permit, so for having a driveway on the road, and for signal improvements as necessary. So. Okay, thank you. W-I-N-D-E-R, Winder. Anybody have any questions? No? Is that all your witnesses? That's all my witnesses. All right, comments from the audience? Come on up, sir. For or against this project? Donald Queenie, Q U E E N E Y. Yes. 
I, uh, I have the adjoining property to this place, and uh, the first I heard about it was two, three days ago, and uh, I got a little 20-second look at the picture they have over there. It looks a little tight to squeeze that in. I couldn't really see the setbacks, but my property uh, has a, a flat wall that comes up against there, and I think there's an eight-foot setback from my property to theirs, but it didn't look like it showed it on that picture. Um, I heard they're asking they ask for different variances. I really didn't hear everything. I have this hearing aid, but it doesn't work so great. And uh, sometimes I think it makes it worse, but yeah, my main concern is uh, that it looks like it's tight. And uh, something that you mentioned was parking on the street, which we dealt with for a long time in our center next door. And when we had chicken over there, that was the main culprit. People stopping to get the chicken and go into uh, when we had a deli there. Right. I was never happier to see that deli go. And we have a hair uh, and nail kind of um, beauty supply house in that property now. And it's, it's a blessing not to have food in our center. And uh, my concern is for trash, garbage, oil. Uh, I've seen problems with oil before, with the cooking oil. Uh, I'm not trying to kill these guys' deal, but it really looks like a tight squeeze to put that in there the way they have it, at least by the 20 seconds I looked at the picture. Right. I don't know if there's anything else I could look at to uh, be a little more informed. Do you, do you want him to go over to variances again for you? Yeah, I'd be, be more than happy to. So we're not asking for any setback variances. You know, um, the only variance is related to doing business within a particular area is the buffer yard, which is not next to your property. That's between us and the middle school behind us. That's supposed to be a buffer yard, but you can't do anything in a buffer yard. We're going to have paving for the pass-through lane and the drive-through. So the actual building itself, no setback concerns. We're not asking for any setback relief. The relief mostly revolves around that buffer between us and the middle school and what we're doing by the street, street trees. There's a few related to parking spaces. There's a few related to having parking spaces. Kind of, I think, similar to your property where people park kind of closer to the road. That's what we're trying to do here, too. So that's one of the variances. The other is to have 20 spaces instead of 50 plus, which the ordinance you know, uh, mandates we have. But, you know, we're never going to have that many people. Um, so those are generally the variances. There's one for impervious. But again, what we're trying to do with impervious is very similar to other properties in the area, including, I think, some of yours. And again, we got this guy here coming up with the stormwater plans to make sure there's not going to be any flooding or that sort of thing. And what I would say to your question about, you know, the chicken, um, I'm not sure, of, you know, the details of what was there before, but did it have a drive through What's that? I'm guessing it didn't have a drive through No. Now, so yeah, people got to park, they got to run in, sure. and you got those issues here. Sure. Knock on wood, barring something crazy, people aren't getting out of those cars. We've so. Cleared. We've been there since 83. We've, we've been through a lot with that problem. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Highway, and when it was the way it was before. Mm -hmm. it, it was pretty challenging. And then when they did the construction, they practically put all my tenants out of business. But somehow most of them survived. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're dealing with a, a, a probably a 70-year-old building, all, all three of my properties, mm -hmm. my three lots. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, looks, it just looks like a little bit of a tight squeeze there. And the way that light turns into the driveway that they show, I always thought it was going to turn into a driveway that was going to go to a bigger project behind us, right. the way it was laid out. Uh, I didn't really think it was going to come into just one freestanding. Yeah, it's, it's, it's odd that the light's there. Uh, I'm not sure the reason for that. Um, I don't know if there was the ever. The light's right there. It yeah. comes right up to that property so. line, and uh, you can turn left into there. Mm -hmm from the opposite side of the street. Yeah. Which I'll say that, you know, it's That's good. Pretty nice. It's nice feature for us. We're, we're happy about What's having, that? We're happy about having the light there. That's good having a controlled intersection. Sure. Um, you know, what I'll say is. The only other question I have is my, my driveway practically butts right up to it. Mm -hmm. How is that going to work? It's going to like. Well, I think. Of, yeah, yeah. Why isn't here? J Justin will walk you through some of this. Sure. And I'll, I'll put the plan in front of you too so you can see it. So your, the, your existing driveway is right here, right next to our property line. Your building is actually on the property line. So we are actually respecting the setbacks. There's going to be about an eight-foot grass strip before there's any paving. The building's about 38 feet away from your property line. 
So the driveway is going to ma main, be maintained. Our driveway is going to line up directly across the street per PennDOT and just per good design. So you're going to have a decent separation. There's going to be a lot more green space. It seems like your, your property right now is almost close to 100% impervious. We're around 74%. So there's going to be green space all around our property. And then the paving that you have that goes to almost the street line, we're going to have a grass strip of close to like 20 feet. It just, it just sounds bad because we have ultimate right away. Right. So there's going to be a separation of parking. Right now, that parking goes all the way down to the street, which is technically off our property. So it's, it's a variance, but it's also an improvement off of existing conditions. So I see your point, and obviously we'll respect everything that's, you know, your existing buildings in, in no way, shape, or form going to be impacted by this. It's actually going to be pushed away from it. I'm happy to share any of these with you, too, as, as we go along. Yeah, and, and uh, if you'd like, um, I'll be more than happy to give you my card. And from here on out, I'll be happy if we're ever in front of the board again, I'll let you know. And if you want anything from us, whether it's copies of plans, renderings, I'll be happy to keep you in the loop. I would like all that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, like I told this gentleman, what's been there for the last 40 years, anything would be an improvement. But we've been next to uh, a... Uh, I know. You didn't gotta say it. A different hamburger joint. Uh, <laughs> church, church, church is a chicken? Or it, I mean, the smell is overwhelming. <laughs> it could, uh, you know, I'm not there every day, but I wouldn't want to be either. I got you. All right. Uh, I don't know what else more I could say here. But Thank you. I hope you guys make the right decision. We always try. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? No, no, no. Okay. I need a motion to accept or deny this application. I need a second. I'll second. Call the board. Mark DeMarcus. Yes. Tim McMahon. Yes. Colleen Dunn. Yes. Ed Murphy. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I need a second. I second. All in favor. Aye. Ayes have it. Just remember, you gotta keep these two yeah, yeah. applicants. Okay.